Hey y'all, Coach Nefi here, guys. Stay with me. Hello. And today we're talking about the hundred and forty-four thousand. Okay. You know, All we right. we hear about those guys over in the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. chapter 14, chapter 7. Right. In this class, we're going to tell you who they are, and we're going to tell you what their mission is. All right. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. In times. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you. I will know what's up with me. All right, so we're looking over here in the book of Revelation chapter 14, mm -hmm. where, where we the second time we hear about these 144,000. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say that because every time you hear the scripture talk about the bride or the elect or the chosen, you know, it's including 144,000. Okay. <laughs> but if you will, go ahead and read verse 1. Okay, this is Revelations 14 and 1, and it reads, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, we may be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, because, you know, when we jump back to uh, chapter 13, it um, kind of is the lead up until this point, mm -hmm. right? So, before we get into that, let's talk about who the hundred and forty-four thousand are. Okay, you know, that's very interesting. I'm kind of interested, well, I'm very interested in this class because, you know, everybody wants to be considered 144. I mean, that's like the, I guess, going thing now. I am very interested in finding out who exactly they are. Well, to gain a lot of this information, we're going to have to go and look in the Third Testament in the Bible. So let's jump over there and look at verse 39 and 19. All right. This chapter 39 is all about the spiritual Israel, mm -hmm. and it includes a whole section on the 144,000 you see there. Okay. Now, we'll cover that in another class. We've actually done this already when we talked about the seal and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This is actually really the only place you understand who these guys are. Okay. You know, if you don't come in here and get these teachings from this book, then you're only really relied to a couple of verses in the Bible. Right. But like I said, this gives a whole section on it. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to come down here to chapter 39, and we're going to go all the way down to verse 19 first, because we want to hear about spiritual Israel. Right. Well, one of the things we know about the 144,000, we learned from uh, chapter 7. Let's go over there and take a look at that right quick, because we're talking about who they are. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you learn over here in chapter 7 is that they are taken from the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Judah or 12 tribes of Judah, Judah is actually one of those tribes. Okay. So you would have the other tribes like Reuben and Levi and everybody's part of this group. Okay. So it's important for us to understand, okay, who is Israel? Well, Israel is, um, well, we know the name Israel comes from um, Jacob. Mm -hmm. um, and these are the children of Israel, those mm -hmm. 12. Um, but I believe that Israel is now covering um, not just a people, a tribe, but other people as well. Well, like I said, I believe you're getting that because you read this section of the book. Right. So let's share it with everybody else. If you will, go ahead and read verse 19. When I speak of my people of Israel, the people of God, I refer to those who have brought a spiritual mission to earth, those who have made known my law, those who have proclaimed me, those who were faithful, those who proclaimed the existence of the living God, those who perpetuated the seed of love, and those who knew how to recognize in the Son, the Word, and the presence of the Father. So, here it is. Mm -hmm. This is a checklist. Yeah. It has nothing to do with bloodline, blood ties, what you look like, where you're from, who your grandparents are, none of that. What color you are. What color, nothing. All, it boils down to these rules here. Like I said, this is a checklist. Mm -hmm. People who have brought a spiritual mission to the earth, made known the law, mm -hmm. proclaimed him. Right. These people are faithful, proclaiming the existence of the living God and perpetuating this seed of love. They knew how to recognize him in the word in the presence of the father. This is a checklist. Right. So, you know, if you want to know if you are Israel, you know, forget about all that other stuff. Just answer these questions here. Mm hmm. Yeah. These are those that form the people of God that is Israel, the strong, the faithful, the prudent Israel. 
That is my legion of soldiers, faithful to the law, faithful to the truth. And see, that's why you hear this battle music in the background. Mm -hmm. Our brother Dirac Ibar says it's time to go to war. It's time to go to war, okay. Serpents lurking, watchers watching, y'all should rally, stay on point. They lurking, we under the covenant, we ain't got no other choice. Girl, your loins up, arm up, cause it's time for war. war. We the generation that's gonna get on one and call. Serpents lurking, watchers watching, y'all should rally, stay on point. Got real we under the covenant, we ain't got no other Don't choice. Girl, your loins up, arm up, cause it's time for war. We the generation that's gonna get on one and call. Now, let's drop down to verse 21. Okay. You should also know that all who aspire to form part of my people can do so by means of their love, charity, and their zeal and faithfulness for the law. So anybody could be Israel. Mm. You know, we were learned over in the book of, um, I think it was um, uh, Esther, that when the tables turned on those people, several of the heathen actually changed themselves into Israel. Okay. They turned themselves into Israel. They became Jews. Mm -hmm. Well, this is how you become a Jew. How, what does it say there? Um, those who aspire to form part of my people can do so by means of their love, love and charity, charity, and their zeal and faithfulness for the law. Law. So love, charity, and the law. If you got those things, you can become Israel. Yeah, this reminds me of when Naomi and Ruth, when Ruth told her that your people will be my people people your god will be my god and so she literally changed herself from one nationality to another yeah. not by race i mean because you can't change your color no. but by um becoming part of israel well, yeah right like you say love charity and the law mm -hmm. makes you israel all right so let's come back up to uh verse 13 um, because it's also talking about who his people are, who Israel are, but this kind of leads into the 144,000 here. Okay. Let's see if you can catch it. Go ahead and read verse 13. I also see the other part of my people, the faithful and determined, those who have always known how to feel my presence, those who have always recognized my coming to men, those who have believed in my revelations and who have obeyed and complied in spite of all. See how he's telling who Israel is. Mm -hmm. No confusion. Right. You know, somebody who wants to believe that Israel is stuck over there in Jerusalem right now um, has to reject scripture in order to do so. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's look at verse 14. That other part is not only you who have been witnesses to my communication through human understanding in this time. For part of the people of spiritual Israel is scattered over the globe. And wherever any of them is found, he or she receives my charity, feels my presence, is sustained by my bread, and awaits me without knowing where I might come, nor in what form, yet they wait. This is Israel. Okay. This is what they're doing in the meantime. Mm -hmm. we, we feel like we're in the end times. We know these prophecies are coming to light. And so we're basically waiting for his return. And like you said, we may not have known from which direction he was coming. But he, we knew that he was coming. You know he coming. You know he coming. Mm -hmm. All right, look at 15. Those who know with certainty my revelations, those who are prepared for the times to come, are you who form part of the 144,000, chosen by me from the 12 tribes of that people, 144,000 who shall be before the numerous people of Israel, like 144,000 captains who will make it march into the great battle of the third era. So here's... Here's the 144,000. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Whereas these guys up here knew he was coming. Right. The 144,000 knew from which direction he was coming. Right. In other words, they knew he was coming spiritually. Mm -hmm. Some of these other guys, even though they may be part of this multitude that no man can number. Right. Some of them were looking for him on television. Yeah. Some of them were looking for the Messiah on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Right. Or over in Jerusalem or somewhere. Not the 144,000. They knew from which direction he was coming. Mm -hmm. You know, because they recognized uh, John over there. Let me look over there. See, these people understood John chapter 4 and verse 24. All right. Read that right quick. It says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So these guys aren't looking for him on YouTube. Right. Right. They were looking for him in spirit and truth. Mm -hmm. Like we read about in chapter 16. Right. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So that's what it's talking about over here when it's saying these 144,000. What it's saying is that 
there's this portion of people who is expecting him to come, but they don't know when and how he's coming. But it's saying that 144,000, they know for certainty. Yeah. Um, when, where. Well, who, not necessarily when, but how he's coming. How he's coming. Like I okay. said, they're not looking for him on the television. They're not looking for him down at the church. You know, they're not looking up in the sky, seeing funny looking clouds saying, I see God up there. Right. Now I get the concept. When it's all said and done, we trying to escape the trouble to come. They gon' siege again in America, not the new one of the sun. That's facing and tightest built the wall first. I can't see us resembling 70 AD. They divide us so we can't see the true enemy. This is the quiet before the storm. Don't sleep. But right here, we see at the end of this verse, how it says what their mission is. Okay. Look right there where it says they will come like captains who will make it march into the great battle of the third era. Yeah. As, this is a war. This this is a battle. Right. It's but the thing is our weapons are not the same as you might think they are. You know, our weapons are prayer and thought and positive things and you know, we're going to defeat hate with love. Yeah, material weapons. Those material weapons don't stand a chance against the weapons that our father has given us. Right. And we learn about those. I'm sure everybody has seen that video, that weapon of the 144,000, so you know what I'm talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. This is spiritual warfare. Now let's jump down to chapter 60. Okay. Because this is talking about the mission. You see, it's called work in accord with the spirit of Christ. Okay. Yeah, this is where we learn what the missions are. Okay, but before we go on, let me make sure that I got this understanding exactly of who they are. So what we're what you're telling me is that 144,000, the 144,000 will come out of the tri 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. But what we previously have been thinking of Israel as a set or group of specific people, mm -hmm. we're not saying that. We're saying that Israel can be anybody as yep. long as they're following this list of criteria that the fathers say that That's it. this That's is Israel, who we right? recognize as Israel. Mm -hmm. So what you're essentially saying is that 144,000 can be anybody. We don't know who they are. <laughs> yeah, well, it kind of reads like that, yeah. Okay. But when you start reading and reading and reading, you'll figure out who they are. Right. Because they, the 144,000 has a list of criteria as well. Well, one of them is right here in verse 89. Read that. Okay. You who have received this revelation are the ones indicated to announce to humanity my new manifestation through human understanding. Who would you wish to testify if you do not? So here, here is a key element to understand if you are 144,000 or not. Okay. Is if you are receiving these teachings. Okay. The third testament of the Bible. If you are in and out of this third testament of the Bible, chances are you are the forerunner. Okay. You got to remember that's what their mission is to learn this stuff. So that they can now come back and teach us the multitude that no man can number. Mm -hmm. Those are the forerunners. They learn it first. Wow. And, th and this stuff, by this stuff, you mean spirit and truth. Well, we learn up there what, what it takes to be Israel is so it's love. Right. These guys are going to learn, learn love first while mm -hmm. the rest of us are still a little bit selfish. Right. They're out there doing stuff for each other mm -hmm. while the rest of us are a little bit disobedient mm -hmm. in these times of peace when, you know, we steal into American idol kind of stuff. The 144,000, they're reading the law. Right. Right. And then charity, doing charitable deeds, love for one another. Mm -hmm. So they are the forerunners. But the reason why they're doing this is because they're getting these teachings, these revelations, he says, and they're getting it ahead of time so that they could come and, like I said, teach the rest of us, teach the multitude that no man can number. Okay. That's why they stand together. Right. Mm -hmm. But you see right there in verse 9. That they walk alongside these 144,000. Okay. So essentially not going to be able to tell them the difference mm -hmm. all, at the end of the day because they're going to stand together all dressed in white robes. Right. Purified through the pain. Right. But the forerunners, the 144,000 are just early birds. I understand. I understand. You know? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the quiet before the storm. 
don't sleep, you been warned. Service lurking, watchers watching, y'all sure around and stay on point. They lurking. We under the covenant, we ain't got no other choice. Gird your loins up, arm up, cause it's time for war. war. We the generation that's gonna get on one and pull. Service lurking, watchers watching, y'all sure around and stay on point. We under the covenant, we ain't got no other choice. Gird your loins up, arm up, cause it's time for war. We the generation that's gonna get on one and pull. But that brings us to the timing of this and okay. when these guys actually stand up. Okay. Right? Because you see them right here in chapter 7, it starts sealing them there. Okay. But then when you go back to chapter 6, the previous chapter down in about verse 12, you start hearing about the great earthquake. Yeah. And the meteor that's supposed to hit Mount Olivet over there in Jerusalem. Right. Creating a crater over there, destroying that old world. Mm -hmm. We read about that in Jeremiah. Well, after this event, we, which is in chapter 6, we, th we see them being sealed over there in chapter 7. Okay, now what do you mean by sealed? Well, we did an entire class on the sealing of the 144,000. Right. Right, and what it takes for them to be sealed. You see right there in verse 40, it starts talking about the mark. Right. Well, the, the Third Testament calls it the mark instead mm -hmm. of the seal. Right. And that's important to understand. We brought that out in that other class because the Old Testament uses mark too. Yeah. And right. And so but if you will, go ahead and read verse 40. To extend my work in this, the third error, I have come to choose from among the great masses, 144,000 spirits, marking them by the kiss of divine light. So that's one of the marks right there, this divine light. Right. And then go on. Not a kiss of betrayal, nor the sign of a pact that will put your spirit in danger. My mark is a sign that the Holy Spirit deposits upon those it has chosen to carry out a great mission in this, the third era. See, a lot of people want to act like they got a mark on their forehead. Yeah, like it's going to be a visible mark. Right. But what he's saying here, if he actually did put a visible mark on your head, mm -hmm. people will hunt you down and kill you. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, they'd be snatching your hat off to see if you had that mark. Yeah. Sort of like um, when he put the mark on, um, was it Cain? Yeah, and then he had mm -hmm. to tell him not to hunt him down. Right. Mm -hmm. Leave verse 45. The mark is an invisible sign by which those who bear it with love, respect, zeal, and humility can complete their mission. Then you will then see that the mark is a divine grace that is superior to pain, that illuminates you in your greatest trials, that reveals profound knowledge, and which in any place can open a breach for the passage of the Spirit. Yeah, like, and so there's your, your seal, right? right? Mm -hmm. And he describes it. You see all the time he uses the mark in this section. Yeah. It, it, like I said, we did a whole class on this. So we yeah. all... Yeah. yeah. We, well, we had a lot of new subscribers and I was thinking that that would be one of the questions people oh, would they're want gonna to ask know. It. You know, what is this mark? What is this seal that you're talking about? Yeah, but it's just going to take so much time. Read verse 59 just in case it's important. Humanity will believe my work will be spread throughout the globe. I shall begin with 144,000 marked out. Who shall struggle with obedience, love, and zeal in the time of the wars of beliefs and doctrines? Yeah, so here, here these marked people or these sealed people, this right. is, you know, that, what they're going through, struggling with obedience. Mm -hmm. We got to learn obedience. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to come easy because these people are expected to teach. Right. Right? And love and zeal, same thing. They got to learn this because they're going to have to teach the rest of us. Right. So what you're saying, well, what the Third Testament is saying is this is not going to be this mark that people are saying um, that they have on their forehead mm -hmm. or then anything that you can see is going to be a characteristic or is going to be the love, the obedience, the zeal that you have for the Father and things like that. Yeah, exactly. And, and there's more. Like I said, we did a big, pretty big class on right. it. Right. Mm -hmm. A war. I notice these devils exposing their plans. I'm surrounded by wolves, but still approaches a lamb. Only a few is gonna realize we the chosen again. The rest won't understand. It's clear we approaching the end. Say I sound like a broken record. I ain't taking the fits. Long as my record's spinning, I'm gonna keep his name in the mix. Talking the savior, of course. I'm a Jew. I ain't gonna ever fold. I'm staying the course. Bowing and never treat this truth as if I'm playing the sport. In competition with who? Knowledge puffeth up. Aki, I seen what them scriptures can do. Trust me. I've been through it too. Also seen hustlers turn to profits. Now they living in truth. I ain't got all the answers. I'm still mapping this out. It's one thing for us to get that we're at 144,000, but it's another thing for us to understand that, hey, it's time to go to work. When it's time to know when you're going to be leashed out into the 
that to the world. That that's part of it. We're going to talk about that, but we're also going to talk about the time in which you geared up. It's not like the father is going to thrust these people out there unprepared. Right. right. It's going to take time to prepare. It's going to take time to prepare, and that kind of takes us to what we learn about the wilderness, mm-hmm. right? And these people actually out there in the wilderness, learning charity, learning love, and learning the law. Without all the distractions of the modern world. You know, when we were in the military um, and we were in basic training, um, they didn't just, our first day there, they just didn't give us the weapons. There were classes that we had to take. We had to um, go through demonstrations. We had to go through a lot of yelling and fussing at by our drill sergeants. Um, It was kind of, you know, it was a, for me, it was kind of scary. But eventually they did give us our weapons. We were prepared and you know they gave us our weapons that reminds me of a dream i had not too long ago where a guy in a military uniform gave me a shotgun and told me to shoot a snake okay and as i was trying to shoot this snake it was an extremely fast snake right mm-hmm. and i was shooting at it and it was like i was shooting blanks <laughs> okay. um, yeah so he gave me the shotgun told me to shoot the snake and i'm steadily trying to shoot the snake and I was shooting blanks mm-hmm. and as he was sitting there watching me and but I happened to move I happened to wound the snake somehow. Right. But when I wounded the snake, a female person in a uni- in the same uniform came and grabbed the snake and started taking care of it. As if it was some type of training thing and I wasn't actually supposed to kill the snake. Right. Yeah. So because mm-hmm. she came and started nursing the snake. I don't know if I threw the shotgun at the snake, but something I did to, to actually get it hurt. Right. And then she immediately came in and stopped me. And started taking care of the snake. So I thought that was like training. That's what led to the 144,000 weapons at 144,000 video. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I started thinking about weapons after that point. Mm-hmm. What are our weapons? Right. And I, I, from what I gathered from that dream is that our father was starting to let me see the weapons without actually giving them to me. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I wasn't ready and prepared to use them. Yeah, you got to be prepared to handle the weapons. I remember, you know, a lot of times when we would have the weapons in our hands and we would turn them one way and our drill sergeant would strike us on our helmets uh, and say, you know, really bad things to us uh, to let us know that's not the way to handle the weapon. So the father is doing the same thing. He just can't hand the weapon to anybody. You have to be prepared before. Well, you, you can't have friendly fire. Right. You definitely will have friendly fire if you don't know which direction to point your weapon. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's come down here to this section called the moment for beginning the worldwide mission. Okay. All right. Um, we'll get into how to use the weapons in the other class. We want to find out in this class when. When? Yeah, because we saw back in Revelation that it's going to start after the earthquake. Okay. Well, what's going on before the earthquake? We're, we got a couple of years before the earthquake. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, let's start up here in verse 15 and we'll come back to 12. Okay. Verse 115. After the entire earth has been greatly tested and shaken and every nation, institution, and household fully judged to its roots and humanity has cleansed every stain. You will go prepare in my name to take my doctrine to your brethren. So that's why you see these people emerging after the great events that we saw. Okay. That's mm-hmm. why you see them coming with the Messiah there in uh, chapter 14. Clothed in white. Clothed in white. This is that army mm-hmm. that he's talking about. How he cracks the sky with this army of myriads, ten thousands upon ten thousands of people. Mm-hmm. It ain't you, there. There are angelic beings traveling at light speed with these individuals, but you got humans there too. Okay. We're like the tank, and the angels are like the tank driver. The tank captain, Mm -hmm. right? So they're maneuvering and manipulating us to get this mission done. All we have to do is prepare ourselves for the mission. And so that's what he's leading up to when he gets to this verse right here is that right now is not the time. Matter of fact, go ahead and read verse 12, 112. If for the moment the world is so blind that it cannot see the light of truth, nor hear my call in the depths of their beings, pray and gain spiritual ground. For in these moments you will not be heard. For all peoples are concentrated to preparing themselves to destroy and to defend themselves. So this is where we're at now. Right. The 144,000 is being empowered. Mm -hmm. Right. We see that from what we read over in Daniel chapter 12 and, you know, the end of Jacob's trouble. Right. These guys are starting to be empowered. We're even starting to see evidence of that. This is what they've been scared of. Yeah. You know, this is why people have been persecuted all throughout history, because the Bible tells us that these people are going to rise up in the end times. Mm hmm. And we're here now. Right. These people are rising up. But look here now. It says in this time, nobody's going to hear them. 
I see that. Yeah, that's why they're having so much trouble getting the word out. Yeah, we were just talking about it this morning, how a prophet has no honor in his own home. Right. And we're finding out in his community, in his state, in other places uh-huh. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So what does it say there in these time now? He says, pray and gain spiritual ground. That's like gaining spiritual knowledge. Is we, that what they're saying? Right. We have to, we, we have to prepare ourselves. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, let me come back up to uh, chapter two. So this is the time that we're living in. If you would, read verse 113. Men must blind themselves yet more until the desperation, the hatred, the terror, and the pain reach their limits. This is the falling away. Mm. You hear about the falling away that must come first, Mm -hmm. right? This is what happens. Man has to deteriorate to the point where he's willing to accept the father. Mm. We're too arrogant now. We're too haughty now. Mm-hmm. We think we don't need him. We don't. We don't have to wait on his provisions when we can pop down to Walmart and fill up our grocery cart with food stamps and WIC checks and stimulus checks and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't have to worry about clothing or anything. Right. In this time that we live in now, humanity has to be humbled first. Right. Read verse one fourteen. Nor will that be the right moment to give them my message, for you will be like a voice crying in the wilderness. I'm sure there's a lot of people can attest to that. Mm. Nobody's listening to you. They all think you're crazy and everything else that comes Even if they think it. you might be telling the truth, they think that the time is not pertinent, so they don't really have to worry about it. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. They, they, you know, um, if you listen to the Jewish community, they think we got 200 plus years before the Messiah ever returns. Why would they be concerned? Right. They're not going to be here. Yeah. They think they're not going to be here. Mm-hmm. They better redo the math. Mm-hmm. You know, those, those find out why those people are missing a few hundred years and find what they're going to find out is that we're within seven years now. Okay. And anybody who's paying attention know that we don't have 200 plus years before this world comes to destruction. I mean, it's kind of evident. Yeah. It's not going to last 200 more days. It seems like some time, <laughs> but you know, <clears throat> But then that brings us back to 115. It says, after the world is shaken. Yeah, after the earthquake. After they're judged, after their senses are cleansed, after the world is fully prepared. After we are humbled. Then these people will come out. And this is why we wanted to do this class. Mm -hmm. Even though they're being empowered now, don't be thinking that we're about to run out and start this mission now. Right. That's not what time it is. Mm -hmm. The time now that we're in now is for preparation. So now it's like a waiting period. Not waiting. No, absolutely not. We have to be on it, on it, on it, learning the law. Right. That's not something you wait on. Right. You can wait all you want. That law ain't going to come. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to get in Exodus chapter 20 through 24 verse 7 and read that law. You remember how many times we read it? Right. And while we were getting prepared, we Mm -hmm. would have to read it. And then, you know, the time would pass and we would start to feel the conscience bear on us. And not knowing why the conscience was bearing in on us, we would go back and read the covenant again. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 20 through 23. And sure enough, we would find something in there that we wasn't doing right. Right. And then once we got that finished, fixed and corrected, then we could go on for a while until the next thing came. And again, we would have to get back in a covenant and find out what's going on. Why is this? So this preparation time is not a period of rest. It's a period of action. Action. Absolute action. It's the other people that's waiting. Right. You know, those people who don't even plan on being here, mm-hmm. they that's all they're doing is waiting. They're getting tired of waiting. When mm-hmm. you look over on the Esau's videos, that's all they say is, I can't wait no more. You know, when is this, when are we leaving? Right. No, not, not, no. 144,000 ain't waiting. They're preparing. They're preparing. They're strengthening. They're building up, building strength, learning how to do charitable deeds, learning how to pray for one another, learning, you know, and learning the law, how to live under their father's rules so that when this terrible day comes, they can stand up and be ready to teach the rest of us. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of the 144,000 is not this average, average character. He's not living the everyday life. He's actually out doing things, but he's making calculated moves um, as far as preparing for this day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, the multitude that no man can number, they may be doing a little bit of waiting. Right. Right. Because they're not really the forerunners. They're the, the students, so to speak. Now, some of them may be watching this video, mm-hmm. but, you know, they're not teaching. Right. Right. They, they are of the multitude that no man can number, which, you know, is fine. 
at the end of the day, we're going to stand together. Right. Not, I mean, you have a huge army. Not everybody in the army has to be special forces. Right. And yeah. everybody can't be 144,000. Right. Everybody can't be Delta Force. Everybody can't be the elite troops that's going to go save humanity. Mm -hmm. Right. So we don't need to be ashamed that these guys are going ahead of us. Right. And plus, you know, the scriptures say don't don't never say that you're 144,000. Mm -hmm. I know you, you often say that it tells us not to um, be out in the street talking about I'm 144,000 and boasting uh, I think one because of uh, you know what the scripture t tells us about how um, that's not you will be I guess hunted or inflicted with pain or all that kind well of come stuff. back over here too and this is important because a lot of guys watching it may fall to this mm -hmm. never tell anybody you're 144,000 look look at verse 44 okay this is chapter 39 and verse 44 I speak to you in this way because there are many hearts among this multitude that would wish to form part of those who have been marked. But I have seen that rather than the yearning to serve humanity with the gifts that the mark bestows, it is the desire to feel secure or vanity that moves them to ask me to call them. Now, some of these people are watching this video. Right. And that's okay. Because what's going on is they're actually of the multitude that no man can number. But nobody, since nobody really explains that to them, the only people they hear about is the 144,000. Right. So they're like, hey, I must be a part of that group. Mm -hmm. Right. But look, what's, but look what it says next. I will test these petty ones and they will be convinced that there is truth in my words. Yeah. So don't, don't, don't call this pain on you. The second you say you are 144,000, it's, it's like saying you are a messenger. Right. As soon as you say you are a messenger, all eyes are going to turn on you. Mm -hmm. And you about to find out. Mm -hmm. You better be ready. Yeah. So don't do it. Just you know. Just, you about to be tested. You're gonna be tested. Right. To and see if you really want to be one, or even if you think if you, you got want. what it takes, and you yeah. might have what it takes. Right. But I always give the example. You better. It's like showing up as a walk on for the NFL football team. <laughs> You better be ready when you step out on that field or they're going to knock your block off. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're ready, you're ready. But I still, I wouldn't tell nobody. Right, like showing up as a sparring partner to Mike Tyson. Yeah, I, I'm going to jump in the ring with Mike Tyson. Yeah, you, you better be ready. <laughs> you better know what you're doing. Right. The descendants of slaves, they had in them iron yokes. Don't take the kingdom, they shook because they know their time is close. The witches at me, put hexes on me, I'm still devoted. Dreams and vision. Papa showed me you thought I didn't notice. Thought I was bluffing when I said angels with me. Jerry, it's hypersonic speed and maneuver swift. It's lurking, watches watching. Y'all should rather stay on point. We under the covenant, we ain't got no other choice. Gird your loins up, arm up, cause it's time for war. war. We the generation that's gonna get on one accord. Serving, lurking, watches watching. Y'all should rather stay on point. We under the covenant, we ain't got no other choice. Gird your loins up, arm up, cause it's time for war. We the generation that's gonna get on one accord. All right, so I want to come back to chapter 55 again because we're talking about the timing of this thing. And it seems to be telling us that the world has to be shaken first before these guys will ever start to pursue their missions. Okay. Well, we're going to come back here to chapter 55, which is the purification of the world and humanity in the judgment. Mm -hmm. And then we'll look at verse 7 right there. Okay. If you will, go ahead and read that. Okay. When those chosen by me find themselves reunited around my law, the earth and the stars will be shaken and in the sky there will be signs. Because at that instance, the voice of the divine spirit, surrounded by the spirit of the just, of the prophets and the martyrs, will judge the spiritual and material realms. So we're waiting on them. Mm -hmm. That's what this is saying. Once these guys are ready, right. this is going down. So that's what's going on is these guys are getting reunited around the law. That's yeah. what we keep talking about the covenant. Mm -hmm. This is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. If you ain't doing this and you watching this video, you probably the multitude that no man can number. And that's good. That's because yeah. you, you can survive the tribulation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody don't have to be special forces. I think being a multitude in the world. I would do. <laughs> you know, I got to go through all that. They got to, could you imagine what these guys, these are the father's army. Mm -hmm. Look at you in basic training. You was in man's army. Mm -hmm training for a job and personnel right could you imagine how tougher it was for those who was training to be infantry mm -mm, because i cried almost every day in basic i wanted to go home to my mama yeah, and, and, <laughs> and, and that's and that's man's army so these guys 
are not gearing up to for Desert Shield, Desert Storm like you was. Right. They're gearing up to save humanity. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how much training and stuff they have to go up, go through. Right. But I ain't trying to steer nobody off of it. You know, because this is our mission. Right. You know, this is what we have to do. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. You know, if he was to choose me for this number, you know, I'm, I'm not going to ask him to choose me because I don't like pain and all of that. <laughs> but if he's going to choose me for this number, I'm sure enough going to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so I made it through basic training with flying colors. Yeah. I'm at least let me know that I can, you know, at least be prepared for this, whatever it is that's to come. Mm -hmm. But it turns out is what being reunited around the law. Yeah, I think, you know. At one time, you know, when we were growing up, we didn't hear nothing about the law. But now, you hear a lot about the law. People are really uh, learning the law and finding out that we are supposed to be following the law. When at one time, we heard nothing about that. So, they are getting reunited around the law. Well, now, let me show you this. You might not remember this from this video we did, 994, mm -hmm. where we showed this moon data that I got from uh, channel uh, Ken Potter, I believe it is. Right. See how he's got this information on these uh, these moons here and the moon data he collected over the course of about 14 years or so. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at this, the middle of this thing is about 2022. Right. And then if you start to look at the eclipses of the sun and the eclipses of the moon starting at 2022, you can see that 2022 is a peak. Like this is the middle. Mm -hmm. So someone glancing at this could easily say that 2022 was the middle of this so-called tribulation. Right. Well, if you go all the way back to 2015, that reminds you of, you know, that tetrad that we saw in the sky over there, mm -hmm. 2014 and 2015, mm -hmm. with so many testimonies of people yeah. um, that we're receiving and what we're understanding from the scripture, this was the beginning of the so-called vibrating echo of the trumpet mm -hmm. that is driving people towards this law. He's pulling us in. Around 2015. This is when it started. Mm -hmm. If you remember for us in 2013, 2014, and the early parts of 2014, we wasn't thinking any. We didn't even know what the law was. Mm -mm. But when it came to Passover of 2015, or uh, this 320 in 2015, it was ever since, that's all we've been thinking about and doing. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? And then when you follow this thing, it kind of takes us all the way over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this right here. So this is actually what's going on. And let me show you this in scripture. We come over here still in chapter 55, down here in verse 97, it starts talking about this vibrating echo of the trumpet. Right. This is why we're all talking about the law now. Right. Mm -hmm. These trumpets are blowing and it's driving us in. Well, we're actually getting ready for this so-called last trump. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's go time. Then these, these soldiers will rise up ready to come help us ready to come save humanity yeah we're having testimony after testimony about uh how people actually start hearing something from the lord and we're now understanding that it is the vibrating echo of a trumpet um they're conscious um mm -hmm. i guess sounding him out blowing the heart horn and telling them it's time to go to it's time to go to war it's time to go to battle well it's actually more than that it's telling us to get reunited around the law it's not telling us to fight it's telling us to cleanse ourselves and prepare ourselves and get ourselves ready mm -hmm. and but in the meantime after we've done that humanity has destroyed themselves right and so now we have to come and save them right. we have to come and help them right mm -hmm. okay i understand what you're saying around 2015 what well what scripture is saying is that around that time we are the people started getting gathered together and they're starting to understand learn about uh the law mm -hmm. and around 2022 20, mm -hmm. this is the peak of it and yeah. now yeah is when things are about to start well, and this is a little bit of conjecture, but it, what it looks to me like is, like I said, 2014, 2015, you know, the year starts in the fall of right. 2014. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So somewhere around uh, the memorial blowing the trumpets or atonement day in 2014 is when I believe these first trumpets started to blow mm -hmm. and they've blown every year. Mm 
Mm -hmm. seven years until you actually get to the middle of this mm -hmm. and then in the middle of this there's a, a, a super blood moon or something like that that falls on second Passover this year okay and then if you back up to what we learned in Daniel chapter 12 and the end of this Jacob's trouble mm -hmm. so what you have is the trouble coming off of these people in January of 2022 mm -hmm. but then there's a period of time between Passover and second Passover where they're being gathered together mm -hmm. and then in here at second Passover they go into the wilderness or, or go into this preparation state while the rest of the planet continues to destroy itself so here's your seven years of plenty here and there are your seven years of famine here and then over here when it's all of this you know when the world is completely humbled mm -hmm. then these people come back and they teach you the law they say okay this is why this happened to us let's not let it happen to us anymore we need to start keeping the feast days and the Sabbath days and and you know, really worshiping our Father. Right. Let's not keep. Let's not let this world do this again, and it's never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So this is what we're doing now. You know, we we while like we're in this year here, we should be out in the wilderness getting prepared while this world destroys itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just reminds me of how this happens over and over again. How the Father always have this remnant of people set aside to bring the people back yeah. to Him. You know, and seems as if that's what we disobey Him, we get punished, and then He has this remnant to bring us back. And I, I just think that's amazing. Well, it gets really interesting when you come over to the book of Jasher okay. and chapter 80, mm -hmm. because you see that before the Exodus, you know, they went through a similar event over there in Egypt. Mm -hmm. It seems like the same thing to me. Mm -hmm. Something came from the sky and messed up the planet. Mm -hmm. Well, you look here in Jasher chapter 80, you see that Moses came two years. Moses was 144,000. Mm -hmm. That was his job to save those two million people. Mm -hmm. Now, now we have seven billion people, so we need a little bit more mm -hmm. than you know one guy, two guys, you know, three of them if you count Miriam. We need a few more to come out to save us. So that's why we got one hundred and forty-four thousand. But once again, he's bringing these people out a few years earlier before the event to get prepared. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's that's the way it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even you know. Yeah, a lot of people you know that maybe haven't read Jasher. Uh, and I think this is the only book that tells that Moses just didn't show up. Yeah, he you showed know? up. He he, he, just didn't show up. he was you know he was out doing stuff. And yeah, and and now that you bring that up, I'll bring up another very important point, and that's over here in uh, chapter seventy of the same book, and that's how Moses went to Pharaoh and asked them to keep the Sabbath day. Mm, okay. Yeah. You see right there. So that should be noted that even though Moses came two years earlier mm -hmm. and it seems as though a whole lot didn't go on. It's like Moses showed up and said, hey, let my people go. Right. And Pharaoh said, no, nah, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And so he wasn't just chilling for two years waiting for the destruction of Egypt. Mm -hmm. He was actually teaching people the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. So anybody on this walk should definitely be keeping the Sabbath day. Right. At getting prepared. That's the number one thing we need to start doing. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, getting over there into uh, Exodus. Right. And the covenant, which is chapter 20, chapter 21, 22, and 23. All right, so let's come back up to uh, chapter 60 and let's look, read 91. Do not sleep, waiting for those times I have spoken of to arrive before you. Rise up and say to humanity, this that you see is what was written. Yeah, so don't wait till the day of the Lord to be trying to tell people. Mm -hmm. Right? Look what it says. No people, it is indispensable that you proclaim it ahead of time, that you prophesy it, that you prepare the path for the arrival of all that I have foretold and promised. That is when you will have fulfilled your mission as forerunners of the spirituality on the earth. So this is what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Right. This is what we what we're doing here is we're letting these people know this is coming. Proclaiming it ahead of time. Yeah. And, and who's listening? 
the only people because we said earlier humanity is not going to listen mm -mm. but it's this multitude that no man can, can number. number these are the people that's listening to this video right now mm -hmm. are this multitude of no man can number wanting to survive this tribulation yeah these are the people who's getting reunited around the law these are the people who's um, out proclaiming it these are the people who's you know actually believe and are reading the third testament and you know they have the zeal they have the um the they're learning about obedience and you know they're doing the work yeah mm -hmm. look, look at 27 in the same chapter only when you have transformed will i send you over the world to spread my message for until the spiritualism of my disciples is real they shall know how to give just as they have received from me. Yeah, so in training. We're mm -hmm. in preparation. In so training, yeah. this is what we're, I know I'm jumping around back and forth, but I'm hoping we're getting this, that we are being empowered right now, but we have to use this time to get prepared. Get trained. Get trained up. Prepare ourselves for what is to come, for this mm -hmm. great battle that is to come. Yeah. Because when that sky cracks, we're going to be with the Messiah when it comes across that sky. Yeah. Ten thousands upon ten thousands of people. Are, this is that multitude that no man can number coming across the sky, spreading this truth like lightning. Yeah, because you don't want to jump out there untrained. <laughs> no, you don't want to jump out there untrained. Because uh, humanity will shoot you down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Reverend, pa the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug is working on his weapons. Yeah. That's for sure. Read 107. 107. Yet, before you go to humanity as teachers, you will come as doctors. And when you have quieted their pains, they will be able to drink from the well of pure water of my word. Seek first the wounds, the sores, and the sicknesses, and cure their ills so that you then may reach their spirits. Yeah. Yeah. So this is in the meantime, we're learning the power of healing. Mm -hmm. This is what they need right now mm -hmm. with all of these pestilences and sorceries and all of this that's going on mm -hmm. in the world. These 144,000, this multitude and no man can number, these forerunners, disciples as I like to call them, mm -hmm. these disciples are healing people. Yeah, you know, that was one of the doors that the Messiah used, you know, that he often used to go into people was the power of healing. Yeah, that's what really, if you think about it, that's what proved himself when he could actually go up and do this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. A couple of more verses. 116. When the time comes, beloved people, you will rise and share my holy word with your brothers. You will scatter throughout the world like good disciples. And this new gospel, which I have brought you, will spread. The light from the sixth seal will spiritually illuminate humanity in this period. And with it, mysteries will be clarified. You heard the scripture say that the word has to be spread throughout the entire world. This right. is what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. This third testament. Mm -hmm. So what he's telling us is that after these events and we rise up to carry out these missions, mm -hmm. it says we're going to get scattered. Right. You know, he's going to take us throughout the world, shining this light on people. Mm -hmm. So we really need to be prepared to go, mm -hmm. you know, because we don't know when this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But we're reading here that these that we're going to have to leave. What is that? Prophet has no honor in his own home. Right. So we're going to scatter around. He's going to scatter us around to uh, spread this light. Read verse 117. My doctrine will become established in different nations, and all those things not yet discovered by men will be revealed through the light from the seven seals. Then you will speak to humanity about these teachings which you received, and will tell it how to fulfill my law. And then it's talking about the seventh seal. Mm. That's the kingdom of heaven. Once we get there, on the other side of this event, this is the kingdom of heaven. The only thing about it, the forerunners are going to lead the way. Right. They're going to be the new Noah's going forward. Mm -hmm. And you guys who are looking at this video, you are possibly, probably one of those numbers. Mm. You're probably one of these guys. But mm -hmm. like I said before, don't tell nobody. Mm -mm. Keep it to yourself. If you, uh, unless you want to be tested. Yeah, you know, <laughs> if you yeah. like tests, if you like pain, uh, some take people it, do. Take it from me. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want that. I made that mistake back in 2018. And when I, now. Yeah, no. 2018 was a rough year, wasn't it? Yeah. 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just glad I got to see 2019. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. So, um, with that, guys, we're going to go ahead and close it out. Check out this song. Check out the rest of the song from Mr. Dirac Arbar. You can go over his channel and see the whole song. And with that, we're going to say shalom. It's time. Uh, 
Surface lurking, watch us watching, y'all should rather stay on point. They lurking. We under the covenant, we ain't got no other choice. Girl, your loins up, arm up, cause it's time for war. war. We the generation that's gonna get on one and pull. Surface lurking, watch us watching, y'all should yeah. rather stay on point. We under the covenant, we ain't got no other no, choice. No, Girl, your loins up, arm up, cause it's time for war. We the generation that's gonna get on one and pull. Thinking of a master plan. Shield the faith, sword of the word, demons don't stand a chance. Word of Jehoshaphat, them dry bones gon' stand again. We study the prophets, we ain't worried, I, we ain't paranoid. Daniel 12 and 1, that archangel gon' stand for us. When the saints march in, I wanna make the number, I, I've been praying for it. I pray when he part the sky, get beamed up and get transformed. We've been having dreams about blocking bullets sent by the task force. With bare hands, I guess we'll find out if they tried that. I won't assume I'm still alive, cause it ain't my time yet. Revelation 20 makes sense, now I get the concept. When this all said and done, we trying to escape the trouble to come. They gon' siege again in America, nothing new under the sun. That's Vespasian and Titus built the wall first, I can't see it's resembling. 70 AD, they divided, so we can't see the true enemy. This is the quiet before the storm, don't sleep, you been warned. Servants lurking, watchers watching, y'all should rather stay on point. They lurking. We under the covenant, we ain't got no other choice. Gird your loins up, arm up, cause it's time for war. war. We the generation that's gonna get on one and pull. Servants lurking, watchers watching, y'all should rather stay on point. We under the covenant, we ain't got no other choice. Gird your loins up, arm up, cause it's time for war. We the generation that's gonna get on one and pull. What was at hand? Rumors of war, I noticed these devils. Devils exposing their plans. I'm surrounded by wolves, but still approaches a lamb. Only a few is gonna realize we the chosen again. The rest won't understand. It's clear we approaching the end. Say I sound like a broken record. I ain't taking the fits. Long as my record's spinning, I'm gonna keep his name in the mix. Talking the savior, of course. I'm a Jew. I ain't gonna ever fold. I'm staying the course. Vowing to never treat this truth as if I'm playing the sport. In competition with who? Knowledge puffeth up. Aki, I seen what them scriptures can do. Trust me, I've been through it too. Also seen hustlers turn to profits now they living in truth i ain't got all the answers i'm still mapping this out should i flee to nigeria or go back to the south